right. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Jessica Cecil. I'm the Education Coordinator at the National Aging Research Institute. Uh, welcome to our online Seminars in Aging program. I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which each of us are meeting today. Uh, for me, that's the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation and pay my respects to their elders, past, present and emerging. Uh, firstly, a little bit of housekeeping regarding Zoom. At the conclusion of the talk, we'll have some time for Q&A. If you have any questions, you can submit them throughout the seminar using the chat function, uh, which can be opened using the chat tab at the bottom of your screen. So today we're going to be hearing from Claire Ganzon from Engaged Art Therapy. Uh, Claire is a registered art therapist working with older people in residential aged care. She's developed a novel approach to art therapy called Art on Behalf, wherein the art a uh, therapist co-creates the artwork with the patient, making it more accessible to people with physical limitations. Claire has been responsible for the development, implementation and evaluation of the Leisure and Lifestyle Program in a residential aged care home. And after witnessing how transformative art therapy was, oh, sorry, art engagement was uh, for residents living with dementia, Claire pursued art therapy full time through her private practice, Engaged Art Therapy. She currently provides individual art therapy to residents in aged care homes around Melbourne. And today is going to be presenting the importance of art therapy in aged care. So welcome, Claire. I'm very much looking forward to hearing your presentation. Uh, over to you. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you for that introduction. And good morning and good afternoon to everyone who's joining us today. I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we meet today. I would also like to pay my respects to elders past, present, and emerging. Um, so as Jessica mentioned, I'm a registered art therapist. I currently work in residential aged care. And um, before we begin the presentation, I'd like to invite you all to um, grab a piece of pencil or a pen and um, you know, a piece of paper for a short um, art activity. Um, and uh, if we have time, a little bit of time later, we might do a sharing of what we create. However, if we don't, that's also okay. You know, um, I just want to remind everyone that this is a non-judgmental space. So don't worry about um, what your artwork will look like. Um, you won't be judged for it. This is a safe space. So please keep an open mind. Um, and yeah, uh, if you have... Um, I can see people getting uh, their papers and pen ready. So, um, all right. So, if you've got your paper ready, sorry, I don't know if you can see that. Um, so, what we'll do is we might just, um, I invite you to place one hand on the piece of paper and using your pen or pencil, whatever you have nearby, just trace the outline of your hand onto that piece of paper. Again, don't worry about what it will look like. We're just tracing the hand outline onto the piece of paper. So mine looks something like this. And I kind of regret using a Sharpie because now it's all over my fingers. But um, anyway, so now that you have your outline, um, I invite you to think about five things that you like about yourself. And maybe write those five things inside the hand. So just inside the space of the hand. Um, yeah, think about five things that you like about yourself. You know, it can be anything really. It might be your smile or it could be your kindness towards others. It's really up to you. And um, again, you know, this is a non-judgmental space if you don't feel like sharing it later and, you know, this might, this artwork might just be for you, um, you know, just be open and honest when, you know, writing th things about yourself. And I might just give you a minute to do that. Thank you. 
And if you have any coloring materials nearby, you know, I do invite you to add some color while I'm doing the presentation. Or if you don't, you might want to finish, finish it at home, you know, another time. If you want to put it aside and you feel like adding some color, adding some images, maybe drawing some symbols um, to, you know, to, to add to your drawing, that would be, that would be good too. All right. Nope. All right, so today's presentation is about the importance of art therapy in residential aged care. So I just want to clarify, in case you don't see it in writing, I am speaking about residential aged care specifically. Um, as Jess mentioned, I, uh, I'm an art therapist and I work with residents um, in aged care homes um, around Melbourne. And yeah, it's um, I feel really um, privileged to give this um, presentation today. And I hope that, um, yeah, that you will enjoy it. So let's talk about the current um, what mental health looks like for older people in residential aged care. Um, I think these figures, you know, are quite bleak. Um, I think we're all kind of aware of this. Um, this isn't new. Um, this is according to the Australian Institute of Health and Welfare. And this, um, this was taken before the pandemic. So you can imagine it's probably a higher figure now with all the social isolation um, and lockdowns that we've been through. And 40% um, of residents do not get regular visitors or they, you know, they don't get any visitors at all. So social isolation has always been a problem, you know, has always been an issue even before the pandemic started. Now, what causes depression among older people? Several factors, but the most common factors would be social isolation. You know, it could be because they've been living alone for a long time, um, their inability to participate in the community and their absence of family ties. There's also that decline in physical health, whether that's from medication side effects, um, restricted mobility and chronic pain. Changes in living arrangement. This is quite a common experience um, for uh, older people transitioning into residential aged care. So um, there's the relocation stress, which is the response to the transition into aged care, where one might experience confusion, um, anxiety, depression, and loneliness. So it's not, um, it's quite common for an older person who might be living independently and then they, they um, have an accident, they go to the hospital, and then from the hospital, the recommendation is for them to move into an aged care home. So that transition is not very smooth. As you can imagine, you don't have enough time to, you know, say goodbye to your home, basically, which you've um, been building your whole life. So that can, you know, um, that can be a very lonely experience. And then there's grief and loss. Um, so there's um, the cumulative loss, you know, loss in relationships, might be loss, um, loss in family ties, uh, your spouse, your children, um, and all of these losses compounding over a period of time. And then there's also the loss of independence, loss of agency, um, all the losses associated when you move, when you transition into aged care. So this was, this is a quote from a residential aged care manager. And I think for anyone who works in, in aged care, you will agree to this quote, which says, mental health is often overlooked and the pathway to receiving mental health assessment 
and services need to improve. So access to mental health in residential aged care is often inadequate. I know um, over the years it has had you know some improvements. There's um, there has been a lot of funding through the PHNs where um, psychologists and you know mental health professionals are um, are able to work with residents. And there's also um, the Swinburne Clinic, Wellbeing Clinic for older adults. I know they offer counseling services as well to residents. So there are a few existing um, pathways. However, um, whether um, people working in aged care are, um, you know, whether they can recognize or they can assess that, um, you know, the residents need help, that's also another thing to consider. Um, more common practices in aged care really to address the mental health issues include um, engaging volunteers, um, providing group activities, family support, and pastoral care. So what is art therapy? I quite like this image, um, this illustration by Asaf Hanuka. I think it, you know, it speaks about the potential, what the potential of art therapy can be. Um, art therapy is a therapeutic service which makes use of the creative process to improve a person's well-being. So by using different art materials like um, painting, uh, clay, collage, sculpture, drawing, um, it's really the interaction with the art materials that and the art therapist that um, you know facilitates that reflection, um, meaning making, connection, and recovery. So um, I'd like to share some five facts about art therapy. I figured you know I didn't want to overload you with information, so I just divided it into these like five nuggets. Um, number one, uh, there are a lot of misconceptions because it is in the name art therapy. Usually when I invite, um, you know, uh, I invite someone to, to do art therapy, the first, um, the most common barrier that I um, get is that, oh, I'm not, I'm not good in art or I'm not an artist or I can't paint very well. Um, and you know what, you don't need any artistic skill to benefit from art therapy. Um, you just need to be open. Um, as I mentioned before, when, you know, for those of you who did the hand tracing activity, that um, you don't have to worry about being judged. Um, art therapy offers that non-judgmental space. You don't have to worry about the aesthetic quality of your artwork. It's more about expression. So, you know, you don't need any skills or experience in art to benefit from art therapy. Um, number two, it's an evidence-based practice. So art therapy is informed by research and um, there is a growing body of research that supports art therapy as a mental health um, intervention. Art therapy is suitable for all ages and background. Um, so the language of art transcends words. So there's no, there's no language barrier when it comes to art. You know, we all use images to communicate. Images are around us. And um, this is what makes art therapy suitable for all ages and backgrounds. So, um, you know, the outcome of art therapy will depend on the person's needs. So for example, you can, um, work with a client, let's say, who is a four-year-old boy um, diagnosed with ASD, and their goal for art therapy might be to help with emotional regulation. So an example um, of an art prompt might be to do a huge scribble chase to get the energy out and into the paper and do a scribble chase with the art therapist. Now, if you're working with, say, a 94-year-old woman with advanced dementia, then you can 
um, tailor your art therapy prompt um, to their needs. So what might be a goal for art therapy for someone living with advanced dementia? I would say maybe sensory stimulation. So an example would be um, if you know that um, this resident had an orange tree, they, were, they had an orange tree growing up, I might bring an orange, you know, we'll paint, we'll paint the orange, and I'll also peel the orange so that they can smell it um, and maybe taste it as well. So it becomes a multi-sensory experience. So that's the beauty of art therapy. You can um, customize it, you can personalize it um, according to the individual's needs. So art therapists are qualified professionals. Art therapists require a master's degree, 750 hours of supervised clinical placement, professional registration, and continuing professional development. And lastly, art therapy is part of allied health. Um, so the professional body in Australia for art therapy is ANZACADA, and we are a member of um, the Allied Health Professions Australia. So I just mentioned this because sometimes it can be a little bit um, confusing to know where art therapy sits in healthcare. Um, so yes, we are officially part of Allied Health. So what does a typical art therapy session look like? And um, I say typical, but you know, really it depends on the person, but this is kind of the general flow of an art therapy session. We start with checking in, um, you know, how are you today? Where are you at? Um, there, you know, you can kind of gauge what, from there you can gauge what the art making might be. This is also where we lay out the art materials or we set up, you know, um, our paints or clay or whatever um, the client needs. And then there's the art making session, um, which I would say would take up the bulk of the session. Um, but then again, this depends on the person's needs. If they feel like they need more time talking, then you know that's that's also okay. And I al always like to end with a reflection, even if it's you know holding an artwork, um, the finished artwork or the finished product, holding it from a distance and looking at the artwork together. So I think it's um, kind of important to have, you know, that part in a session. Um, it also encourages um, reminiscing and storytelling. So often, you know, that's part of um, art therapy, uh, my art therapy work with older people because, um, yeah, they have a lot of stories to tell. And, um, you know, um, when you're making art that's connected to their personal narrative, this is um, this becomes an outlet for them to tell stories and to reminisce. So how can art therapy support older people in residential aged care? I want to share with you some outcomes from two studies, so a systematic review in 2019 and a scoping review done in 2021. So these are just some of the outcomes that I've kind of grouped together that I'll be um, discussing. So art therapy facilitates creative expression and play. Play is very important. Play is important at any age, okay? Um, play releases endorphins. It promotes a sense of wonder and imagination. And creative play can look like, you know, um, mixing colors together, um, making a collage of funny images, experimenting with the new art materials, trying something that you haven't done before. And this is important because you allow yourself to just be, to play, to connect with your inner child. And there's no right or wrong way in play. That's the beauty of it. You know, you're playing and um, you, um, you're experimenting, you don't know what the outcome will be like. So to have that safe space um, to, to be allowed to play and experiment 
um, you know, that can be um, a really um, transformative um, factor. And I like this quote by D.W. Winnicott. It reads, it is in playing and in only playing that the individual child or adult is able to be creative and to use the whole personality. It is only in being creative that the individual discovers the self. So discovering the self and connecting to the self is a big theme, um, especially um, in my presentation today, in my work in art therapy with older adults. Um, you know, it's uh, very important to um, connect to connect to the self and strengthen that um, sense of self. So in these two studies as well, art therapy was shown to decrease depression and anxiety. Um, through enabling reflection on their previous losses, um, as I mentioned, the cumulative loss um, of older people that's, you know, that can cause symptoms of depression and anxiety. And through art therapy, you know, you, you're able to kind of reflect on that um, without, being, without it being too confronted, confronting. You can do that through artwork, um, through imagery, um, and... Uh, together with an art therapist, you know, explore your feelings. Um, and also there's that social interaction, whether you're in a group or whether it's an individual session, um, you make connections um, with people who might be going through the same thing that you are. And, you know, in art therapy, you can also revisit um, your life experiences and gain um, insight and maybe a change in outlook. Um, art therapy contributes to a positive view of self. So I practice a strengths-based approach in art therapy and my work with older people um, living in residential age care and older people living with dementia. So strengths-based meaning you um, celebrate their capacity instead of focusing on the illness and um, focusing on their strengths and not their limitations. And acknowledging their unique life experiences. So just going back to the hand, um, if you created the hand drawing um, with five things that you like about yourself, you know, that is an example of how you connect to your strengths. And that is a reflection of, you know, of your strengths as an artwork. So. I do invite you to add, you know, more color or images to it later on, and you know this might serve, um, yeah, as a nice, uh, a nice little artwork for when you need a little bit of um, inspiration and you need a little boost. Um, so that's an example of like how art therapy can focus on one's strengths and not their limitations. Interpersonal connections. So creating with others in a group setting can be really. Um, can be a really healing experience. Um, when I was doing group art therapy in a memory support unit, um, there would be about four, four to six on average, four to six residents in that group. And I remember there's this one resident, um, let's just call, let's call him Bob. Um, Bob, whenever he would join our art therapy, um, group, he, you know, he'd start painting and then he'd just start humming. He'd start humming and then he'd start singing um, the tune Morningtown Ride by the Seekers <laughs> and then, you know, just start singing um, randomly. And then later on, before you know it, the whole group is doing a sing along of the Seekers, which is such a fantastic, you know, it's such a, it's such a fantastic moment. It's, it's a sign of, you know, that they're enjoying themselves and that they're having a good time. And yeah, it can, you know, one person can affect that whole group positively. And Bob was also very, um, very generous with, with his compliments. So going back to that kind of session flow where we have that reflection at the end. So usually in a group, you know, that might look like, okay, let's just, show what we made today and 
someone and each one will comment oh and it's always you know, it's always a positive comment but with bob he was very very generous he was very sincere about oh that's such a great work you you know you did an amazing work today and just imagine you know for someone um living with dementia in a memory support unit that kind of encouragement um, and, you know, feeling valued for what you've created for your artwork, that that's a big deal that can um, really improve their mood. So that is the power of group, um, group work. Um, but also, there's that interpersonal connection with the art therapist, if you're doing individual work, um, which I think um, can also be a more profound connection. So sense of mastery and agency. Um, so art therapy usually focuses on the process of art making and um, places more importance on the process rather than the product, the end product itself. However, in this instance, um, in my work in aged care, I've, I've come to know that the end product does matter. Um, it matters because it's a finished end product. It doesn't matter what the aesthetic qualities are or how it looks, you know, um, or if everyone comes up with the same artwork, um, that like that doesn't matter. But what matters is that you finished an artwork and that brings a sense of achievement. It's not about the aesthetic qualities, but that sense of achievement that you get from finishing an artwork. So this is actually a photo of um, artworks from a group exhibit that we had in the aged care home that I work in. And we had a lot of positive feedback from residents and for the family members as well, just seeing their, um, their mom or dad's artwork being displayed. Um, and it's also, uh, it also happens uh, pretty often that whenever um, I'm doing individual work um, with a resident, they might ask me to um, display their artwork on their wall. Mm -hmm. So that speaks a lot about, you know, that um, feeling pride in your work and feeling proud that, you know, I made this um, and I want other people to see this, you know. Um, and the sense of agency as well. I want to touch on this and um, why it's important in residential aged care. So when you move into an aged care home, choices are made for you, right? So what time you wake up, um, what you eat, what time you shower, um, what, what you watch on TV, what time is afternoon tea, what you have for afternoon tea, et cetera, et cetera. These choices are made for you. So you're not fully in control of how the day goes because you know these choices are already made for you. Now, in art therapy, when you're creating a painting, you're in control, okay? You choose what paint to use. You choose if you wanna do a collage, you choose the direction of how you want your artwork to look like. So you're in control, you make these decisions and the finished artwork is a reflection of the choices that you made. And that's a good reminder, you know, you have that on your wall, you have an original artwork that's made by you. And that serves as a reminder that, you know, you're not, um, that you are still in control, that you can still exercise control. Um, yeah. Um, this is a quote from Raquel Stevenson. So Raquel is, an art therapist um, based in the US, and she's been working with older adults for about uh, 25 or 30 years now. Um, she recently wrote a book about, um, about art therapy and creative aging, and this is um, a quote from that book. So she says, it is impossible to bring back a loved one who has died or restore the lost capabilities that had allowed the person to live independently. What I can do is to help them regain their balance and adjust to the loss and its consequences by strengthening their sense of self and supporting their resilience. 
So this um, resonates a lot with my experience as well in, um, in um, facilitating art therapy um, sessions with older adults. And um, let's talk about the sense of self. If you can see, I highlighted that in the in the quote and how you know important this is um, for older adults. So, if you've been to a uh, an aged care home, you might notice you know it looks a lot like a hotel. Um, it's not very homey unless you know it's a very very small aged care homes, which is also quite rare. Usually, they're about ninety. 100 110 beds so you know that's a lot of people um and more often than not if you know um if you enter residential aged care um with dementia or with an illness with parkinson's then your identity gets wrapped around your illness and um you know i i know this from experience from working in in aged care that you know we associate we tend to associate a resident with perhaps their behavior. Like, oh, when we see Maggie, Maggie is the wanderer. So when you see her, the first thing that goes to your mind might be to, um, you know, to check if she's wandering or she's walking around, and she looks a bit lost, or if she if she's going to abscond or not. So these are the thoughts, you know, that the first thing that would come to your mind because what you're most aware of is Maggie's illness and Maggie's uh, changed behaviors because of her dementia. But what about Maggie, the primary school teacher or Maggie, the amateur singer, you know? We don't think about these things because um, yeah, in a place where there are a hundred residents, you know, we, all, we always think about, oh, um, the health, the health first. So what change behaviors they're exhibiting. And I guess what Raquel says here is, you know, having another person, having an art therapist be present and give you their undivided attention, witness your creative expression can have that really positive impact on someone's life. And she, you know, when you connect with Maggie through artwork, through art therapy, through creativity, then, you know, um, you're connecting to Maggie's whole identity and not just her dementia. Okay. Um, so now I'd like to talk about um, art therapy specifically as a non-pharmacological um, intervention for people living with dementia. So I'm sharing with you today two um, outcomes from two studies. Um, about, um, yeah, so this one is a systematic review um, done in 2021. So I quite like this um, illustration as well. If you can see, um, I realize it might be a bit um, uh, cropped, if you can see my, but anyway, it says there are art heels and it's like an art, uh, a prescription for art. Um, and I know that um, Hammond Care has something similar, um, arts on prescription, where, you know, they prescribe, not prescribe, but um, yeah, um, it's a program for older adults um, to engage in art, in, in the arts, in music, painting, drama. Um, so there is already that existing, um, you know, program. Uh, Anyway, so art therapy as a non-pharmacological intervention for older people living with dementia. The evidence is out there already, okay? And I know that we need to build on this evidence. However, it is out there. Um, and this is one of those where they um, found improvements in four domains. So the cognitive function, um, including outcomes relating to changes in attention, concentration and memory. Now in the in the aged care home that I work in, in the a memory support unit, um, one of the family members who is also um, the full-time carer, she's there every day for her sister. Um, she's mentioned to me, you know, so many times that, you know, every time um, the residents are painting, they are so focused. They are just focused on that task. And if you can create that environment of you know, relax, 
um, with the right background music, with minimal noise, and just the focus on creating artwork, then that really, um, yeah, that um, improves their concentration. Um, the second one is improvements in behavioral and psychological symptoms of dementia with outcomes relating to changes in motivation, mood, apathy, instances of aggressive behavior, or agitation and sadness. And I'll be speaking more about this in the next, um, the next slide. Um, outcomes in well-being and also improvements in quality of life. So outcomes relating to changes in communication, fulfillment, engagement, as well as general quality of life measures. So I want to focus here on communication. Um, uh, it's not uncommon for people living with dementia to, um, you know, over time not be able to communicate with words. So I've worked with several um, residents who are um, nonverbal and who can't communicate with words, but, you know, they engage with art. Um, and this is their way of, um, of communicating, you know, this is the way of express, expressing themselves. This is how, um, yeah, how they express themselves creatively. And I think that's, you know, that, that can be a huge thing, especially when you don't have your voice anymore. And a separate theme of being in the moment also emerged in that systematic review. And we, we know that, um, you know, it's important to create these moments, um, moments of joy, moments of, um, you know, being totally engaged um, when working with people with dementia. So another study, um, this is another study wherein residents were receiving group art therapy sessions for 50 minutes for 12 weeks. And they um, resulted in improvement in agitated behaviors. So this study was focusing mostly on um, agitated behaviors um, for people living with dementia. So yeah, this is a very promising study. It showed improvement and also shown to be effective to evoke positive memories that induce joy and relaxation, increase socialization, and raise self-confidence. So, you know, the, the evidence is out there. Um, I'd love to see um, in the future, you know, more um, art therapy um, or creative arts therapy even. By the way, when I, when I say creative arts therapy, that is the term for, uh, that's the umbrella term for art therapy, music therapy, uh, drama therapy, um, dance movement therapy. Um, that's the umbrella term for all the creative therapies. Um, so it would be amazing to see um, the creative arts therapy receive more support in dementia care. So currently, these are the recommendations. Um, the Royal Commission into Aged Care. Um, uh, recommendation number 38, um, residential aged care to include allied health care. Um, and I know um, probably we all have feelings about the Royal Commission, um, you know, whether this will be implemented or not, um, who knows, but, you know, it's uh, the fact that it's, it's written, it's written there, you can see I underlined um, art therapist, that's a big win, I think, to be, you know, acknowledged and to be valued for the contribution of, you know, the creative arts therapies in um, older people's well-being feels really, feels really good. Um, and also there's that um, the Australian Psychological Society um, has this free online course um, about supporting the mental health of older people in residential aged care. And in one of their, um, in the module where they talk about, you know, effective treatments, there's also a mention of music and art therapy. So I, I mentioned this because, you know, um, like this is a start, this is a good start, um, but we have a long way to go, you know, to promote arts engagement and to promote art, uh, the creative arts therapies um, and specifically art therapy 
um, in, in aged care. And, you know, the evidence is out there. Um, yeah. Um, and I'm hoping that through this presentation as well, that, you know, I've kind of made clear how the art, um, how art therapy can support older people living in residential aged care and people living with dementia. Um, so just my references and yeah, thank you very much. And if you have any questions, um, please um, write it in the chat box. I might um, stop my screen share now. Jess, I'll hand it over to you. Great. Well, thank you very much, Claire. I mean, as Claire just stated, uh, we now have some time for Q&A. If you have any questions, uh, please submit them now through the chat function. Uh, alternatively, if you'd like to ask a question in person, you could turn on your camera and your microphone now and we'll call on you in turn. While we wait to see if any questions come in, I've got a couple. My first one being, what exactly is a scribble chase? Oh, so a good question, Jessica. Um, a scribble chase is so, um, imagine I, I'm, I'm the child and you might be the art therapist. And we have a paper, okay? This is a paper, we all, we each have a pen or a marker and you start scribbling and I will follow where your, um, where you, you, your mark making leads. So you will lead the scribble and I will chase, <laughs> kind of chase the mark around the paper. So that is quite, um, you know, uh, that's a good like introductory activity or, you know, as I mentioned earlier, um, if you are after like um, regulation, emotional regulation, you know, to get the energy out there um, and doing something together, you know, with the art therapist. Um, yeah, that's, um, that's the scribble chase. <laughs> you don't have to be an art therapist, you know, to do it. Like if you want to try it um, with someone that you're with right now, you know, go for it. <laughs> that's great. And did you have a question you'd like to ask Claire? Yeah, I do. Um, what is the approximate cost of having an art therapist? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, we um... had one at our facility uh, a few years ago and we lost her due to um, uh, pregnancy and life changes for her. Mm. And when I have requested it, um, they say it's not in our budget. So I need to allocate um, some funding for this very valuable service. And I'd like to know approximately <laughs> approximately that's approximately, a great question yeah, yeah because you know, my funds where we are yeah yeah um and you know i um before starting my private practice i also had to research on that um a domain so from what i've found it can vary from um about a hundred dollars per hour to uh i think the most that i found was about 180 per hour so it's in that range yeah um, that equates to music um, therapists, mm. or, or rather even performers and entertainers that we bring in mm. on a weekly basis. Yeah. So that gives um, me great grounding to apply yeah. for our therapists. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um, are, you, um, are you in residential aged care, Anne? Yeah, I'm a um, lifestyle um, uh, coordinator for residential aged care. Oh, that's wonderful. I used to be a lifestyle coordinator as well. So um, I know exactly, you know, like in terms of like budgeting and yeah. Um, yes, it's, you know, um, as I mentioned earlier, the, you know, the mental health um, access needs to improve um, because yeah, we have budget for entertainers. We have, you know, the budget for decorations, but do we have like budget for um you know mental health supports like music and art therapists so i can clearly yeah. see the need for physiotherapists Absolutely. and dietrists and mm. all the healthcare professionals that they understand mm. but now that you've got those lovely new evidence-based um researchers and that's building as i understand because that's a whole new um basis that i've seen through your presentation Mm. Um, the new research that's gone into the benefits will help me in my presentation to get an art therapist for our facility. Thank you. Oh, wonderful. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Anne. We've got a question coming in from Frances. Uh, she says, thanks, Claire. Uh, do you collect specific outcomes before or after sessions? So uh, 
The studies that I presented earlier, there were um, measured um, before and after. However, I'm, um, I don't do that myself at the moment, um, but I am you know, interested in pursuing research, um, art therapy research in the future. So this is something that I'm definitely open to. Great. Uh, Jacqueline says, fantastic presentation, Claire. Uh, thank you, Jackie. Uh, Dorothy asks, when you attend a group service in, a, in an aged care facility, do you get an allocated area and whom do you negotiate for it? You do. So usually um, the allocated area might be a lounge room. So it, uh, you know, it could be an activity room. If it's an activity room, then it's more private. Um, but if it's, if you end up in the lounge room, then, you know, you will have to kind of adapt to that environment. And with whom do you negotiate for it? I usually, um, I am um, in contact with the lifestyle coordinators. Um, so they are the ones who, yeah, who, um, who really help me out. And um, um, yeah, they're allies. They are our allies. <laughs> Great. Um, I have a question about group therapy sessions. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned that art therapy can and often is tailored to the individual. How do you facilitate that in a group where you have multiple people presumably needing to do a relatively similar form of art? Mm. Yeah, that's um, that's uh, that's when you know um, in a group session. So I try to. Um, with each person do something that you know they're interested in or something that's um they have a personal connection to rather than um have everyone do the same thing because i mean sometimes that is you know sometimes that works so if there's a specific theme that you're working towards but i would prefer um what i do is like um yeah so each one has kind of their own separate thing and and then, you know, that way we can create something original, something personal, and it doesn't have to be the same with everyone else. Um, that's why also in facilitating groups, um, you know, I don't recommend more than more than six people. If you can do like small groups are better because, um, yeah, as you can understand, you know, big groups, um, yeah, bigger groups are harder to facilitate. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, so Louise asks, do you have uh, allied health assistants involved in art therapy? Um, so sometimes um, art therapy um, student placements might be involved or lifestyle assistants might um, help out. Um, so uh, if, you know, if um, recreational or diversional therapists are willing to help out as well, um, yeah, especially in facilitating groups, then they're more than welcome to yeah, to assist in, in group sessions. Um, there are, you know, a lot of, there's a lot of overlap between art therapy and let's say recreational therapy or diversional therapy um, within the context of aged care. So yeah, um, um, I would say they, they're always welcome to help out, yeah. Great, uh, we've got a question from Stacy and another one from Dorothy. Stacey or Dorothy, you're fully welcome to turn on your mic if you want to ask it in person, <laughs> but I'll, I'll read it out otherwise. Um, so Stacey says, great presentation. Uh, just curious to know, how long and intensive is an art therapy degree? Uh, and is it specifically an art therapy degree or is it a degree that uh, covers the umbrella of creative arts, including music therapy? So thank you, Stacey. Um, so the um so there are degrees that are that offer creative arts therapy um so that covers you know more that's more the umbrella term but there's also a specific art therapy um master's degree which takes two years to complete so that's the full-time um yeah that would be the full-time um timeline if you're interested in um in pursuing, yeah, the art therapy degree. And so with art therapy, it's, yeah, that is more focused on visual art. Um, I'm not sure how long the creative arts therapies one take. Um, I think it's offered in the University of Melbourne. I'm not sure, uh, um, but yeah, um, there there's also that option. So yeah, I would say two years. Um, mm -hmm. That's great. 
Uh, and Dorothy asks, how do you choose the residents for a group? Um, so how do I choose residents? Usually um, the residents who are, um, are willing <laughs> to participate. Um, this, you know, that I, it's never always the same people. So it does help that, you know, some residents might already be interested in art. But again, there's also that barrier of, you know, um, art therapy or yeah, painting. I'm not good in painting. So you kind of have to work around that. And then once you find that personal connection, you know, um, or you, you, you might invite them to be part of the group first and um, not do any painting. And then later on, they might be inclined to join in painting or, you know, sculpture. Um, so it's really, um, yeah, I wouldn't say I have like a specific criteria, but for, you know, for anyone who's willing to, to give it a try and anyone who's open to engaging with art materials, um, yeah, that's, um, I would start from there. Nice, fantastic. Um, so you mentioned more creative arts therapy research is, is what we need kind of going forward. Yeah. I was wondering, um, is there any research of your own that you would like to, to talk about briefly or perhaps research that you'd like to do? Um, I would like to um, actually, uh, yeah, I'd love to do more research on art therapy and um, how, you know, art therapy as a non-pharmacological intervention for people living with dementia, because, um, yeah, that's, uh, you know, um, uh, I've seen how, um, I've seen the difference that it makes, and I think, because I think that's kind of a barrier right now that, you know, it's not getting the support that it needs, because people are always wanting, you know, evidence, but now that there is evidence here, I think, yeah, we just need to kind of support that evidence and like kind of build on that. Um, Fantastic. Um, all right, if we have no more questions for Claire, would everyone please join me in thanking her with your clap reaction? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Claire, for coming and presenting to us today. I really enjoyed your presentation. Um, everyone, please join us uh, next fortnight on Tuesday, the 12th of April at midday. And thank you very much for attending our Seminars in Aging program today.